How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Jules Strongbow, your ringside sportscaster. It's a pleasure to welcome you ringside for another hour's presentation of wild, action-packed wrestling. If you're ready, let's move down ringside and get started with the first bout. This event, a tag team match featuring the Torres brothers, Alberto Torres and Raymond Torres, meeting Big Mike Sharp and Art Boom Boom Mahaley. And the Mexican tag team champion from Sonora, Mexico, one of the brothers, at 226 pounds, Ramon Torres. And his brother at 228 pounds, Alberto Torres. Their opponent tonight, 265 pounds, Canada, Mike Sharp. And 240 pounds, Chicago, Boom Boom Mahalik. Take away, Ruby. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a tag team match. Our announcer, Way Meadow, forgot to mention the time limit, but it's one fall with a 20-minute time limit. The referee, Mike Ruby, is checking the Taurus brothers. Raymond closest to you on the right of the camera, and Alberto standing next to the referee. Their opponents, Big Mike Sharp from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. And his partner, Art Boom Boom Mahalik from Chicago. <laughs> Alberto and Ramon are a great tag team combination, brothers. They really, uh, they really use a lot of team teamwork and work very good together. Big Mike Sharp, that elbow smasher, hits to the midsection of Alberto. They say blood is thicker than water, and in tag team combinations it always appears to be because the brother combinations from the chips get down seem to have that little extra gift of teamwork, of pulling for one another. I know when Big Mike Sharp and his brother Ben helped the world heavyweight championship the tag team combination, Mike seemed to be able to work just a little closer than he does with uh, any other opponent. A partner, pardon, pardon me. I said opponent, I meant partner. Eggs in once again, and comes Sharp again. Well, it's a fine partner for Sharp. Big, powerful man. Eggs in, and comes Mahaley. First off, trying to get to Ramon. He does. He does get to Ramon. Ramon comes in at the right cross, and boom, the way. Mexican boy go. Lord, boy, boy. Didn't quite catch my helix as solid as he wanted with that uh, drop kick. Boy, if he'd have caught it, that drop kick that he had in my helix with the phone there across the ring. But he just half caught him the way he wanted him. Mike trying to step on the foot of uh, Raymond. Referee Mike Ruby's right on the job, though. Again, once again, in comes Sharp. Mahaley and Sharp working very good together tonight. Art Boom Boom Mahaley 
stepping through the ropes, I see. Coming in. Referee pushed him back down. the pace of Raymond, puts him back in the corner. Tags in, the switch is on, his sharp steps out and Mahaley comes in. Coming in, the tag is in, now it's Alberto. <laughs> and the Mexican boys from Sonora really, really has the crowd on their side. As you can hear the crowd yell, come on, Raymond, come on, Alberto. Two very fine, clean-cut athletes. A safe walk by Mahalik. Watches in once again, then comes Mike Sharp. Five minutes gone, five. Five minutes gone, 15 minutes to go. Tag <laughs> team wrestling, all by some legalized murder. Boy, the combination of Sharp and Mahaley Kids, Murder Incorporated. Alberto and Mahalik back in the corner. The tag's in and comes Sharp. Now it's Alberto and Sharp. Pushing Sharp back into the corner. The tag's in and comes the ball. And it's a ride. And another ride. And down goes Big Mike Sharp. One, two. Only a count of two. And it bombs away. Watch these boys go. And he picks him up. All 275 pounds out. Then comes the head. It's Alberto in the ring. Watch this way. Mold Tari Skull. Picks a big 475 pound sharp up like he was a baby. Tags in and then comes Mahalik. It's a leg drop. Down goes Mahalik. And Raymond pulling it back to the corner. The tag's in. Then comes Alberto now. And a walk around leg lock by Alberto. Favorites of the crowd, these Taurus brothers. And once again, the tag's in. In comes Ramon. And they get a little stretch just before the break. Alberto on one leg, Ramon on the other. And they stretch out Mahaley. He looked like he was nine feet tall there for a moment. in the corner they're working him over. The 
Keep working on that leg. Almost made it to the corner to tag Mike Sharp. Couldn't quite make it. Alberto working the walk, walk around Toho now. Tags Ramon. In comes Ramon. Switch onto the leg once again. Raymond pulls Mahalik back once again. And the brothers continue to tag and walk, work on the left leg of Mahalik. And the tag does get in and come sharp. Big boy from Ontario, Canada. And once again, the tag's in. It comes Mahalik. Dropped by Mahalik. Seems to be in bad shape for that knee. In this event, the sensational young Mexican wrestling star Al Torres meets the great John L. And the first spot tonight, one fall for a 15-minute time limit. The referee, the third man in the ring tonight, is Mike Ruby. the 228 pounds Sonora, Mexico, Alberto Torres. 220 pounds from Bowling Green, Kentucky, the great general. Take it away, Ruby. There you have it, the pride of Bowling Green, Kentucky, the great John L. coming to grips with the sensational young Mexican wrestling star, Alberto Torres. Alberto Torres comes from a wrestling family. There's three of the boys. Oh, but it looks like the great John L. starting off in his usual form. We started to say there's three of the wrestling Torreses. There's Alberto, Ramon, and Enrique. Alberto's the youngest of them, although not the smallest. He's about an inch and a half taller than either one of the other boys. And about five to ten pounds heavier than them. showing right off the fact that he is, uh, despite his height and all, is very uh, fast and can move around. Arm drag, two of them on the great John L. And it's the great John L out under the rope, up on the outside on the apron, tells the referee, Mike Ruby, keep him back, keep him back. Remember the great John L. with the sideburns and the whiskers? Well, <laughs> now he doesn't have them, as you can plainly see. 
He was called out on the lot to do a movie scene with a lion, and I guess they thought they couldn't tell which one was the lion with the long sideburns on. How do you Side hard, side headlock, and over goes Torres. Oh, this boy really watches those shoulders. You see him come up at the count of one, then. Wrestling stars of the 60s. In this event, we're showing you one of the really, truly new stars of the map, Alberto Torres. And it's the great John L. throwing best in the crowd. Up comes the knee, bound away as Torres goes to work on the great John L. Down he goes again. Back into the ropes with a toss across the ring. Follows him up with John L. Out on the apron once again. I think the great John L has learned that out under the ropes and onto the apron not only breaks the hold, but it, it breaks up a series of attack by his opponent. He used it quite frequently. First wrist lock and roll over and a short arm scissor by Torres. Short arm scissors, most times called a Japanese short arm scissor. As the Japanese have been given credit for inventing this particular hold. It was originally a jujitsu hold as it stopped the circulation, the flow of blood, and made the arm useless, as you probably know. That is the secret of jujitsu to stop circulation and paralyze the muscles of either the arm, leg, or the abdomen. That's the reason they wear the the jackets. Mike Ruby, third man in the ring, a very fine referee. We've had him on Wrestling Stars of the 60s before, and uh, I know that you've always enjoyed his fast, clean type of refereeing. And you see the great John L. holding the arm. It's, uh, it stops the circulation there, and your arm, uh, well, it's kind of like uh, your foot going to sleep. You know how that feels. It's completely useless for a few moments till you get the circulation back through the arm. say Alberto Torres is the youngest of the Torres brothers, we don't mean that he's a, a rank amateur at all. He has several years of professional wrestling behind him already, and he had more experience, I guess, than most uh, young wrestlers when they start in, when he started his professional career, because his brothers Ramon and Enrique had certainly trained him and brought him along from the time he was able to wrestle at all.
Excellent face lock, punched to the side of the head by the great John L. Mike Ruby breaks it up. Once again, it's the great John L. And out it's through the legs, another way up the back again, with a punch to the side of the head, and another one. Down goes the great John L. as Alberto Torres goes to work. Out of the way. On top, a count of one. No, just a count of one, not quite even a two count. And it's a diamond head twist. Once again, Torres working on the head of the great John L. Twisting the head. And a foot on top of the head. Hey, John L. Using a fist once again. Fine there. And as he walks in, it's a long fist to the midsection. And another one, and it's the great John L. in trouble. There's the knee lift to the side of the head. Trying to set him up for... Oh, it's the flying head scissor down. He goes it up on top of him as Torres. The count is one, two, three, and it's Alberto Torres. Taking the measure of the great John L. Here's our ring announcer, Ray Meadows, to give us the time of the fall. In the time of nine minutes with the flying head scissors, Torre is the winner. There you have it, Alberto Torres, the winner in this event. In this event, George Drake of Avalon on Santa Catalina Island meets Stan the Man Holly. And now here's our ring announcer, Way Meadow. And the next stop for a 15 minute time limit at 235 pounds from Texas, Stan Halleck. At 224 pounds, Santa Catalina, George Drake. Take it away, Red Shoe. Big Stan the Man Holly versus George Drake. George is one of the few wrestlers to ever come from San and Catalina Island. At home, he was born and raised in Avalon. If you've ever been to Santa Catalina, you know where Avalon is. You've heard it in songs, seen it in motion pictures. Yes, it's quite a wonderful fairyland of, for vacationers. This boy's from there, George Drake in the light front. His opponent, Big Stan the Man Holly. Sometimes called Cowboy Stan Holly because he is a real working cowboy, a bulldogger. He makes all of the rodeos. If you ever attend the rodeos, you'll see Stan around there because he's quite a bulldogger. Drake. Pollock still holding on to the side headlock. And both boys roll over the end of the rope. 
Referee asks for a break. Have it on the break. It's Don Holly. Come on, Drake. that big right fist of his under the side of the head of Drake. The standing wrist lock takes Drake down. Once again, it's a handful of hair. The referee Red Shoes do get out. Tells him to break, and he makes him break. And right back on top of Drake, though. with a series of fists into the midsection of Drake. Arm drag by Drake. Arm stretch. Moves into an arm stretch. There's Van Holly trying to put his foot out over the rope. Referee kicks the rope, moves it back in. Drake keeping good leverage and balance on that arm stretch. The left arm of Stan Holly. Moves over, drops down on the arm with his knee. You must feel the arm of Holly weakening a little. He's changing. He keeps working on that arm. Switching in the head scissor, both boys back to their feet. The boys move very fast for big heavyweights. This arm smash into the mid section of the Drake by Holly. Shows the referee, Red Shoes Dugan, it was only a forearm smash. Five minutes gone, five. Five minutes gone, ten minutes to go. to break the home. Step back. Get a good clean break. This George Drake has got a little backhand swing. You notice him using that from time to time. Catches the phone a little off. Catching right right-handed, backhanded into the solar plexus. These boys go one on top of the other on the top. They're first one and then the other. Fighting hard. Very evenly matched. Both very good boys. 
It's George Drake in the light trunks and Stan the man Hollick in the dark trunks. Hollick has a little advantage in height, weight, or this great a fighter. from Hollick. It's a good clean break for a change. Hollick usually been showing that fist into the midsection or the side of the head on the break. And again, it's Drake. Drake likes to uh, uh, switch his opponent through the legs instead of getting back to the feet. Caught him right on the point of the chair. Comes back to the board, Smash. What's these boys go? Boy, this is a reason I quit wrestling. The pressure's getting stronger and stronger. And it looks like Drake's getting a little assistance from the ring side. As two of our fairies are pulling Hollick's ball off of the road. And the referee makes the break here. Hollick having a few words with the young ladies in the ring side that was breaking his foot off of the road. And they wave their hand at him and say, ah, go on, go on. Once again, Holly holding the hammer lock with, with that loose hand, placing the fist into the midsection of Drake. And another one. That's Drake in bad shape. That's a, and it's a throw, it's a toe the other, other side arguing about it. Eight minutes on, five to go. Ten minutes on, five minutes to go. side of wrestling himself with a little bite into the ear of uh, Sam the man and Sam still holding the ear and a push into the side of the head once again right on the sore ear Pounding the head of Drake into the corner, turnbuckle, Polly. Back on top of him once again. And the corner of the store, Drake. Up on the two, just back to And Drake does Right into the chin. Off into the ropes, off with a fine tackle, Drake. And another, and down goes Polly. Him up in the body slam, drops the knee under the throat, on top of Drake. Drake coming out for winning the knee. This boy just won't quit. Across the knee of the back breaker, Drake pulls the leg up. This time it is the full count of one, two, three, yes, and the man high. Extra measure is But not until this bad, hard, terrifically fought battle on the part of the boy from Catalina. Here's our ring announcer with the time of the fall. In the time of 12 minutes and 15 seconds, the knee drop stands the man, Halleck. Oh, the back 
pressure right across the knee was what did the job. George Drake still a lot of fight left at him though. Walks around following Stan the man. Stan says to the referee, keep him back. And to the right the referee and into the corner. Found him to the side of the head of Harlick. And Harlick steps out on the apron. Moves back inside the ring. It looks like all the fight isn't gone out of either one of the boys. But the referee says that's enough. Well, there you have it, folks. It's Stan the Man Holly taking the measure of George Drake and this event. In this event, Art Boom Boom Mihalik of Chicago meets the world's heavyweight wrestling champion, Edouard Carpentier. At 225 pounds, the champion of the world, Eduardo Carpentier. His opponent at 240 pounds, Chicago, Art Boom Boom Mihalik. Edward Capanti, world's heavyweight wrestling champion, appearing on Wrestling Stars of the 60s, taking on Big Art Boom Boom Mihalik of Chicago, a real powerhouse in wrestling, a former professional football player that played with the San Francisco 49ers with Pittsburgh. Now he's a spending a full time on the map wrestling, and boy, he's really doing good, too. Fast, hard wrestler. Only tonight from Paris, France. One of the most spectacular wrestlers that we've had in many a year. Now the world's heavyweight wrestling champion, Edouard Carpentier. Moving out of the head says the hard food my hand. He gets up, looks around, speaks to the referee, says I think he must have a little grease on his head. <laughs> and once again, a rolling, a rolling out of the toe hold is Carpentier. We well, told you he was fantastic and amazing in his style of wrestling. He certainly is. He's proving it tonight against this outstanding wrestler, Art Mahaley. Hammerlock. And Carpente moves into a cross leg scissor. Head scissor. Moving the foot of Carpentier into the throat. The referee says, no, it isn't a chokehold. <laughs> and it's Mahalik holding the fight for Carpentier. Carpentier trying to tell the referee. Rolling the arms of Mahalik back and down he goes. Mahalik <laughs> moving in behind Mahalik. And Mahalik going out for the ropes and does make it. Marion back into the cross leg head scissor once again is for Pontier.
speaks to the referee. What is this? What's going on? Five minutes gone, ten minutes to go. With a head into the midsection in a bear hug. Putting all the pressure right in the solar plexus. But Carpentier uh, switching into a hip lock. Umbu Mahalik with a short jab into the side of the head of Carpentier. Knee into the midsection and another. To me, and my head into the midsection of the Pontier. Off into the road, San Capante doing a flip over, and a back kick! Moves into the leg lock, and it's the leg, the leg stuffer is... And the other leg! San Capante doing a backward bridge over with both legs, and the ball is to Capante! Carpante, world's heavyweight wrestling champion, takes the measure of our Boom Boom Mahaley. In the time of seven minutes with the French frog, Carpentier. There you have it, the very popular Frenchman from Paris, France, takes the measure of our Boom Boom Mahaley with one of, another of his unusual wrestling halls. I'm here with, uh, perhaps we can get Jules Strombo to come down and join us. For a word or two about the action as he saw it from his vantage point in the first ball. I wave to Jules and see if he'll come on down. He's got to check on something in the ring. But here he comes. And I know whatever he has to say is going to be of interest to every one of you. Because this is Mr. Wrestling himself. Jules, draw up a chair and join us here. And, and uh, we've talked about that uh, that hold of Zabos, But uh, I think it never gets beyond the point where it isn't interesting to hear about. Well, uh... <laughs> There's something interesting up in the ring now. I just talked to both contestants and the referee. All three of them are mad. Oh? Yes. Uh, uh, John Tolis uh, claims uh, that uh, in using that hold, that Zabo uses it uh, with a choke, that he is choking while he's using the hold. And the referee's to about the point that uh, he's uh, saying if uh, they're, they're big enough to do, they can do, because he, <laughs> this is turning out to be a pretty rough one all the way around. You're right. These boys is. are going at it. Uh, it, is a, it is a hold, Bill, that when a man is lifted up in the air, the arm does come down on the throat there, but it isn't a, a long enough time that uh, 
Uh, it could be called a choke because the referee usually gives about a three count on the thing, you know? That's right. No, and uh, so actually it couldn't be counted as a choke, although the weight is lifted with it around the, the face, and it does. If a man is heavy like Tolis, why, his arm is apt to slip down there. However, the idea of the hold itself is not a choke hold. It's a, it's a face lock that he lifts. Yes. And, uh, of course... Uh, the referee's mad, Zavo's mad, he says it isn't a choke, so they're all mad. It's quite a combination up.